Right, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, so this one's just going to be relaxed because I've been sat here for like four minutes trying to figure out what I'm going to call this video, what I'm going to do in it. So I've decided it's just going to be a relaxed one. I'm just going to show you some updates, do a couple of bits and we're just going to chill out, I think. So first thing I'll mention is this guy here. Um, this was set in an upcoming video. I just haven't received the second parcel yet. So yeah, as um. I got this from Thompson and Morgan and they sent me this uh, for free which was really nice but you'll understand like when I up when I upload my next well when I upload the video about it you'll you'll understand but um I got this begonia maculata yti and I don't I don't know if I can show the part or not because and I mentioned this in that video as well but I've I'm I've planted it in this um, part that's I don't know if I can show it or not. It's like a little bit rude, basically, but um, I'll leave it up to your imagination. If I like cover the the majority of it, yeah, you can kind of understand what it is. Um, but this plant came looking super healthy and it's just looking so lovely. I, I don't want it to get too much taller. Obviously it's going to, but I may propagate it once it gets a bit taller because I don't really have space for something much taller than this. Um, but going on from that, I have, I don't know how long ago I showed you the prop my propagation box and what's growing in there because um, Emma Greenwood sent me a Begonia Maculata YTI um, a few months ago now and it has grown so much. Look at that. It's, um, its main leaf did just come off like as I got it out of the propagation box. That was the leaf that she sent to me. Was it already... Was it already growing or not? Yeah. I don't remember actually. But this is what it looks like now. It's it's oldest leaf is getting a little bit um a little bit crispy on the end, but that was because it was accidentally trapped in the propagation lid and I hadn't realised, but um the rest is looking super healthy. And the coloration is starting to come on on the backs of the leaves. Um because as you would have seen on this one, the back's like super dark burgundy. So I'm so happy with that. And I think I could potentially plant them both together one day, but they'll need to go into a bigger pot. But that one is looking so lovely. So that's really good. Um, and let's show some other bits. Oh, right, okay. I was gonna, uh, this was the first thing I was gonna do, but um, I forgot. So I went to a really random garden center that um, they just seem to buy in whatever stock is available. Like they were just, it doesn't necessarily make sense what they have in stock, they just have loads of weird stuff in stock. And they brought in a begonia mix, and I found one of the begonias that I'd been looking for for such a long time, but I'd given up looking for it because I kind of just accepted that I was never gonna find it. Um, and if you guys know Story and Succulents or Laura, um, you'll know that her one of her like prized possession plants is her begonia um, breakdance. And you guessed it, that is the one I found. Um, it wasn't labelled as a breakdance, but I stared at it quite intently for a while, and it's definitely the same one. I was, like, ecstatic when I found it, and I picked it up straight away. But that is definitely... Because it's got... I was looking at it, and I was like, wait, has it got the green bits going through it? But it does. You see, like, there, on the leaves, the green's going through. So I'm definitely going to try and propagate this. And it's, like, a super thick, healthy plant. Um, and it was only six quid as well, which was a really good because I would have probably paid up to 20 quid for this, um, only because I know how hard they are to find. Um, but the foliage is just incredible on that. Because the closest I could find to the breakdance was a black fang, and I bought one of those from that place with the horrible uh, plug plants. <laughs> no, that's unfair. I bought them from Dibley's, and um, it died. So, But I have this now, and I think I'm going to cut these two leaves off here, and I'll propagate those because they're like hanging down, whereas the rest is like very upright. Um, and I do want to pot that into a bigger pot because um, a problem I've been having with my begonias recently is that they've been drying out. And because begonias don't tend to wilt, I can't tell that they're dry. Or I mean, I could go over and touch the soil, but I haven't been. Um, so a lot of leaves have been dying because of that, but I'm not going to allow that to happen to this one. And I'm going to propagate it. Oh, it's so pretty. So it's a shame you can't see it from like this side when the light's shining for it. I probably could try, but like the speckling on the leaves is just so pretty. 
<sighs> yeah, I was very happy to find that. I literally picked it up straight away. And there's like four to choose from. So I was like picking them all up, taking them out of their plastic sleeves and just looking at them. Um, so like, I'm really happy that I finally got one of them. And I, because I, I think that was the one plant that I kind of had accepted that I was never going to get it. So to find it just randomly was really good. Um, what else do I need to show you guys? Oh, right. I feel like I show this plant a lot, actually, I do, but my philodendron varicosum has grown so much, um, and his newest leaf actually has the, the, like, textured PTL, whereas the other ones didn't, so that's really cool, and it looks kind of, it look, I don't know, it looks a bit weird, like, a little bit gross, but it's really cool because that's like the most mature leaf I have, which is wicked. Oh yeah, the, I guess the oldest one had it slightly because that was the leaf that was sent to me by Emma, um, the propagation leaf and all this is new growth. So that's like the first leaf I've grown that's got the hairy petiole, which is super cool. Um, yeah, and these, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who's doing this. Well, I do, but um, these have been, but well i've been they've been quite popular for a while now but the price of these is absolutely disgusting um they've got these in at periwoods at the moment and i think they were oh but they were between 100 was it like 160 to 210 or something like that i don't know the exact number but um that it was like that much for a plant about this size probably less leaves and i just think that is like so like, I don't really know, oh, I just think it's so unnecessary, and uh, it's just such, so, it, it, it's so greedy, because these grow so quickly, so, I just think it's, like, just have have a bit more patience, everyone, if you're after one of these, do not pay that much money for one, either buy a propagation, like, you, you can see here grows really well, or wait until maybe in the summer, or the following year, and the price is going to absolutely plummet because people are going to be mass producing them because they're like onto a gold mine because of how much people can charge at the moment. So just don't, I'd say don't buy them, but obviously if you've got the money to do that, you go for it. But I just think that is disgusting how they can charge that much money for something that grows so quickly. Like philodendrons grow so quick. They, it's not like, like ZZs that grow super, super slow. That's why the price of ZZ uh, Ravens has always been pretty high because they grow so slow. Um, but philodendrons, it's just about availability. That's the only reason they are so high priced because I promise you in about a year and a half time or two years, the price is gonna be so regular and it's gonna be insane. It's like with the, philodend um, with the philodendron Birkins, people were paying a lot of money for them to begin with. But then they mass produced them, like people bought the rights to mass produce them. And because I think they micro prop them, which means you can literally grow 10,000 at a time, like, and the price just plummeted. And that's exactly what's going to happen with these. So just have patience. But anyway, ran over. How beautiful is that? <laughs> yeah, because uh, I wouldn't have paid. I wouldn't have paid 200 pounds for this. Luckily, I have lovely friends and um, Emma sent me this, like the leaf, the propagation, but I would, I, I, was, I was trying to think of how much I would pay for this, and I think I wouldn't pay any more than 20 quid, which means I wouldn't get one, because no one's going to sell one for 20 quid, but I'd have the patience to wait, but anyway, there's a new leaf coming, <laughs> that's really cool, oh, that, that means that new leaf's going to be even bigger, oh, which takes me on to the next thing I wanted to show, oh, right, okay. Right, so next up, I wanted to show my philodendron Birkin, and this is amazing. Oh, um, I haven't replied, I forgot. The the pot that I planted my philodendron uh, imperial red into the other day, that you guys saw, um, was painted by the same artist. I could say, no, my niece like dr draws on the pots, and she drew on that one as well, that was uh, my imperial red went into. In case anyone was wondering, because I know someone asked, and I, know I forgot to reply, but that's... Yes, um, it wasn't me. <laughs> um, anyway, 
my Birkin has gone crazy insane and like the new leaf coming up is entirely white. There's like a speck of green in the top. You can just see, I don't know how I'm gonna get that angle. You can just see in the top, there's like a speck of green. Um, and I really don't know how that's gonna grow. Like it's gonna, it's coming in completely white and it kind of got stuck. So I had to, um, I sprayed it with water cause it was really sticky. So I sprayed it with water to kind of get the stick off. And then um, I kind of, you can see where I kind of broke that, but I kind of like loosened it up and then it has now started uncurling. Um, but I just don't really know how that's going to work because when you get plants that are entirely um, variegated, they can't really pho photosynthesize. So I don't know if the following leaf is going to be entirely, rever like uh, entirely um, variegated as well. I just don't know. So I'm a little bit... Uh, because I've never seen one much bigger than these, I don't think. I know Emma Greenwood has a massive one, but I don't think, I don't know if her leaf, like her main central growing point is entirely very good like this. Um, so I'm interested to see what's going to happen next, but it's huge. I don't know if you guys remember when I first bought this, it was like half the size. Yeah, about half the size. And I love it. There's two plants in there. Is there two or three? Yeah, two. Um, so this plant, here and then the main plant in the center that's coming up super super nice yeah so that is growing really well and i kind of moved this about a little bit he's been in he's been in like uh really well lit areas and then he's been in quite low lit areas and he doesn't seem to mind being in either or so that's a really pretty leaf there like half a variegated and half not. That's really pretty. Yeah, so that one is doing really good. Oh, I've been using um, this water spike to water it because I think I've actually overwatered it a little bit at the moment. It's a little bit damp. Um, yeah, it's a little bit damp. Um, but I've been watering it through this rather than pouring it into the soil so that it just slowly releases into there. Um, but I need to leave that for a little while to let it dry out a little bit, but I've never had any problems with overwatering, and, um, yeah, that's because I don't water it, <laughs> like, before I had this, I would water it maybe once every month and a half, um, but now I water it maybe once a month, <laughs> so I don't water it very much, but I remember I left it, like, two, maybe three months without watering it once, and it did not even wilt. The leaves, um, curled in a tiny bit from memory I don't know it's a few months ago now um but these are really drought tolerant um as long as it's not in like direct sun but yeah my philodendron birkin right okay so this plant oh lebed I don't remember the name it's like lebdeburium or something like that I can't remember but this guy that I've had for such a long time and it's never really grown where it like grows its leaves and then it drops some leaves and then it'll grow some new ones but it's actually starting to send up some little flowers. I don't know. I don't know if you can really see that. But it's actually doing something, which is really nice. And I think I think they come in purple or white, I think, from memory. I don't really know. But that's good because that's like the first time it's actually done something. But I do really love it. And I think it looks really quite tropical. Um, it looks like a easier to care for <laughs> version of a jewel orchid. So I've had Ludicia discolor before and I've had this and I have to say I prefer this because to me it gives me the same satisfaction through like the texture or the patterning it gives me the same sort of like all interest do you know what I mean and then um however these can dry out really really nicely and this one I've had it in full shade I've had it in full sun in the window hot summer sun and it loves it um it's never had I've never had any problems with it I keep it in terracotta and the majority of the time it's dry and then I'll just soak it every now and again but because it's terracotta it dries out quite quickly so um but that is such a beautiful plant and I'm really happy that it's flowering also I don't know if I'm gonna even find the flowers interesting but that is good and it's not really grown so much I guess it's like there's a lot more bulbs because they're actually like bulbs that are on the surface of the soil and you can't really see it too well but I'm like really happy with that and I got this from it's like two years ago now oh god I hope not but yeah it probably was about two years ago now um that mystery yeah it was 
I think it was 2019. Jesus. Right. Um, yeah, I got this in a mystery box, a houseplant mystery box, which um, I found on Etsy. It's not on... No, it was on eBay. On eBay, yeah, and they, they don't have them on there anymore. So, um, but I wouldn't have got this if I didn't get it in the mystery box, which is why I'm glad I bought the mystery box, because this has been really nice enjoyable to grow and to keep and I just love the like look of it in that pot right next and just quickly I'll show you my lovely um, Alocasia Capria Red Secret <clears throat> thankfully it has not declined at all in the slightest um there's a bit of soil spillage and I've just noticed as well there's a new leaf coming up you see that right in the center there so I'm happy about that and quite often with Alocasias when they grow a new leaf they'll drop one of the oldest leaves or two of the oldest leaves as i've had experience with um so i'm hoping that when that new leaf comes through it doesn't drop one of the old ones or if it does it'll only drop one hopefully but we'll see but it's still looking amazing i keep this directly under the grow light but it's about three and a half foot away so and it seems to be doing really well Getting a little bit dusty, but that texture on there is so good. And I think it just looks so good in that giraffe plant. Huh? Yeah. Right, next up is one that I show quite often, but it's because I just love it and I'm proud of it. And that is okay. <laughs> so this is my propagations of the begonias that were also sent to me by Emma Greenwood. Um, I feel like this channel is an Emma Greenwood, is sponsored by Emma Greenwood. <laughs> right, um, and um, Laura, because uh, Laura bought me the alocasia, which I bloody love it. Um, and then Emma Greenwood sent me all of these and the begonia maculata. And what else? Loads of stuff. She sent me loads of stuff. She's lovely. Go check her channel out. Both their channels. Go check them both out. Oh, I'll show the fitonia as well in a minute that um, Laura sent me. Because we're spreading appreciation, right? Um, this is my little jungle of begonias. This is doing bloody lovely and it's doing so well at the moment that I don't want to change it because I was thinking I could take these out and like divide them and I'll, I could make a video out of it but then I was thinking oh but then I'm gonna have to keep on top of watering them and then I'm gonna have to like they're gonna have to go in different places and I was thinking I don't want to do that I just want them to I don't want to disturb it because of how well they're growing so let me quickly show a better close-up so we've got what have we got here a lot of these I don't know the name of. This one in the back is a Marmaduke here, which is growing lovely. And the leaves are getting nice and big now, so I, once they get a little bit bigger, like maybe an inch bigger, I might start I might I might start propagating them. And then we've got this beautiful large begonia in the centre, which is doing amazing. And then we have this variety, which I'm a little bit worried is gonna get over crowded and he may end up dying off because he's only i can only see one of his leaves well maybe i'll go in there and save that one and then we've got the one in the front which is different to that one very slightly is it huh yeah 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 these are more silver and these are where is it these are less silver right i don't know it's so merged in together and then we have the bowery tiger paw and then down in here we have this really pretty little, uh, was it a trailing begonia or a climbing? I'm not sure. It's, I know it's, I'm not sure, but it's looking so pretty at the moment. I remember that one being like a little less impressive before, but now it's looking really pretty. Oh, it'd be interesting to see if any of these flower in here actually. Oh yeah, so what I was saying before I got distracted, I was thinking about potentially, I don't have a space. Uh, anyway, right. <laughs> I was thinking about putting these into a bigger propagator because basically I just keep them in a propagator all the time. So they've just got a lid on, no ventilation, no holes. I mean, there's obviously a little tiny gap between the plastics, um, but that has worked so well for me, as you can see. And I don't like, I the last time I watered this, I genuinely don't remember, uh, months and months and months ago, um, because it just maintains its own moisture. Um, oh, and then down there we've got another Marmaduke. So this was a Marmaduke off of my, my, my plant. Oh, I'll show you that in a minute as well. Um, yeah, so I was thinking about putting these into 
just a larger uh, propagator and growing them on. So give them a little bit deeper, deeper soil, um, spread them out a little bit because I've, I don't know. I think I've, because I've kind of had a lot of problem with my begonias that aren't in propagators, it makes sense to put them in propagators, but then I don't want propagators everywhere. So maybe I just make one terrarium potentially. I don't know. I, I've got a I've got to think about space and at the moment these are like directly under my grow light which is the like obviously the prime position for them um but that's definitely something worth considering uh yeah hmm. Hmm. excuse my spot on my face <laughs> um so they are doing so so good and i'm definitely going to need to do something with them relatively soon oh the bowery i, I spoke about this in my recent video but um this is the other one. This is the one that hasn't been in the propagator, and you can see it's got smaller leaves than the one that is. So yeah. I've kind of just had him balanced in that pot. I don't want to put him in the pot. Because he seems to be doing fine like that, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And yeah, he's got a drainage hole. And it looks like a little honey pot, doesn't it? I like that pot. Right, and then next we have my um, Alocasia Amazonica, or Alocasia... Polly, <laughs> yeah, there's a fly, um, which is doing all right, but, well, it's not really, I mean, this, <laughs> it's doing good, no, this leaf is dying off, and this is the last one we've got, and there are no signs of new growth, you can see there, no signs of new growth, but it's not dead, and it's, like, nice and firm, and I've been watering it, when it gets i don't even know where this new leaf's gonna come from like <laughs> i don't know oh there they're there right okay yeah so we've got the little the little slice there which is where the new leaf is going to come from no sign of any growth yet um i did let this dry out again for a little while a long while <laughs> um but he's nice and damp at the moment oh i only paid 4.99 for it so like we ain't playing with um big money here <laughs> um I'll probably take that leaf off. Let's do that right now. Now we've got a a poly palm tree. We've got the single. Oh, that looks kind of cool. <laughs> it's like Totoro's little leaf, big leaf. Um, that's that. I just thought I'd show you. It's not dying. It's not dying. I don't know. But this leaf is healthy. If if I was, if this leaf was deteriorating, I'd be genuinely concerned about it. But I'm not. Is that here on there? Yeah, so that actually looks kind of cute like that. Um, but I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, what we got next? Right, my um, Ripsalis Paradoxa has... I just noticed it yesterday because I kind of keep it in a position where I don't really see it too often. Um, we've got some new growth on the top here. We have a little new growth see it on the end you see can you see it i can put it there in front of my face you can see it just that little tiny tip of end growth there and then this one is branching out up here and then three branches down here so that's really cool and he's proper trailing now um he's probably going to need a bigger pot relatively soon but with this one i really let it dry out between <laughs> it looks so like scraggly um but i let it dry out quite a lot well all the way between watering um, and then I water it, and he seems to be enjoying it, and he looks so strange, like robot arms, um, but I'm happy it's growing, and the, the new propagations that I put in there, one of them's growing, and one of them's just chilling, nicely rooted, so all good, oh, he's got another root coming out of the stem, you see just there, that's quite cool. Yeah, so these root really easy. So um, depending on the size of plant you want, you can get these like giant baskets of these now for 20 quid, I think. Um, but I got this propagation for like five, it was like 4 99 No, it was fiver, I think. Um, and they're growing relatively quickly. Like I think I would have regretted buying a large one because I don't have the space, but this one seems to be scratching the itch and growing really nicely. <laughs>
Right, with my um, Sansferis Star Canary, you guys would have remembered I showed this in a video, you may not. Um, I potted it up into a terracotta pot, the same as my Libdoburium, whatever it's called, was in. Um, and I changed it because I, di I just didn't like it and the pot, it wasn't fitting in the pot nicely. And it was drying out too quick, I say too quickly, but like... No, I think the problem was that it wasn't absorbing the water when I wanted to water it. Um, so I've changed him into this pot. Um, and he's looking really good. I don't want to tip it because I just recently transplanted him. And yeah, he's looking lovely. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Um, these need water and these drying out too, too quickly. Um, but this is one of my, these, these is, this is one of my propagation trays of this Begonia Rex that I don't have the variety name. Um, this was like, it's down in my bathroom, you guys would have seen it before. I'm really not fairly, like, I'm, like, I'm making you guys connect the dots rather than connecting the dots myself, which is such a lazy thing to do. But, um, anyway, this has grown so well, um, and so well so that it dries out so quickly, but I just don't want to transplant it. I just, maybe I'm thinking about, because the, that it's only like this deep, I may pull the whole thing out add another layer of soil and then plug it back in just so it doesn't dry out so quickly but it's growing beautifully and they are so easy to propagate and these have actually been in here maybe half a year probably longer i just don't want to like make it feel real but yeah um that's so pretty i love that that's what i'm gonna hope to do with my um begonia break dance have Loads of new growths because there's one like I won't count them. There's like over ten in there. You see, and I need to water that. Where's my water? Water. I don't know when watering can. Oh, it's over there. It's right over there. I will water this after. Remind me. Right, um, my Hoya polynura propagation. Is that, I was looking at it, I was like, I was about to say, it's doing really good, but I haven't looked at it. It is doing really good. Yeah, it's doing well good. Um, It's a bit dry now, so I'll water it. I've got, I've got, a, oh no. I've been watering this one with rainwater. I don't know why, but I just have. You tell me why, I don't remember why, but I have been. Um, It's probably because it's in sphagnum moss, and I feel like rainwater's better for it, and I really want this to grow, so. So you can see the new leaves, right, the problem I had with this one was the first new leaves he grew out ended up getting damaged, you see the damage on them, and then I was like, oh no, now it's just going to look ugly, but then the next four, um, four leaves have been so healthy and so lovely and just so good, <laughs> um, so I'm really happy with it, and I actually keep this like, um, I usually keep it relatively wet. Oh, I think I put too much in there. <laughs> if there's too much in there, I'll let it soak up into the moss. If there's too much in there, I'll just pour, pour it out into my other polyneura. Oh, I'll show you my... Like, yeah, I'll show you my other polyneura as well that this one came from. Um, um, I know a couple of you guys... Oh, there's actually... Yeah, there's one on here, right. So they, it's like they fret to flower. You see that little... I don't know if you can see it. It's like they try to flower and then it never comes to anything. And I don't know if you guys all have the same experience with your polyneuras or if you've actually got them to flower because it's like it will grow a single or two flowers and they'll stay there for about a month and then they'll just disappear. But they won't, unless I'm just, are they like micro flowers? I don't know. Um, but I'll be interested to know what you guys know about the polyneura flower um, because mine has always, it's grown, like in the time I've had my large one, it's grown probably over 10 flowers and they just not one has ever opened they'll just sit there for a month and then drop off or like they must drop off because they don't just vanish right so i don't remember how recently i've shown you this because i feel like i have shown you it quite recently but my main polyneura has absolutely grown massive um oh, it's so pretty it's so pretty and i kind of i I don't know, no I don't want to, but part of me is thinking oh, I should cut this in half, propagate it and then put it back in, but I'm really enjoying how long they're getting because I've, I don't actively look, but I've never seen a polyneura so long online, um, but as I say I don't actively look so I'm not claiming to have a really big one, 
but it is looking lovely. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I do need to dust it. We've got a lot of dust um, accumulating on here. Also, I found a pest on it the other day. No, no, it was like a couple of months ago. Um, I found a, a weird bug on it, which I don't know what it was. It could have actually been one of my predatory mites, which I released in my room. <laughs> Sounds so weird. <laughs> um, it's like to kill fribs, and I've had zero problems with fribs since. Um, what are they called? Something cucumeris. I don't remember the name. I remember the cucumeris because that seems like an easy word to remember. Um, right. Yeah, but he's growing lovely and he's just grown. Um, the leaves, like how I've noticed the growing pattern is that the leaves will take a really long time to grow, as in like the new shoot will take a long while to become, like it'll take a long time to start growing a new shoot but then once the leaves begin to open, like once they begin to open, <laughs> they just grow within a matter of days. Like this, these two leaves here, literally I'd say about three days ago, they were half the size. Yeah, I feel like it was less than that. They can't, I, I like, I'm trying not to exaggerate. I'm not exaggerating. But those two leaves literally a few days ago were less than half that size. So they grow really quick. The leaves grow quick, but they take a long time to get growing. And I've been underwatering this a little bit recently. Um, I keep this one a lot. Well, I don't keep it. I don't ever keep it wet. Never. Um, but I water it about four times more frequently than any of my other Hoyas. Um, because it really wants that, like, more water. Um, I used to... I did start using um, Orchid Mist on my Hoyas, but I don't seem to be able to keep up with fertilizing anything in this room. Um, I don't seem to be able to keep up with like feeding my plants in here. Um, so I don't ever water this with a sprayer, by the way. I normally pour water in there, but that's all I have at the moment. <laughs> right, anyway, yeah, so that is doing so good and i'm so happy with it we've got like a really empty bag but that's fine because that's what faces the wall and then this is what faces outwards and that is oh it's so good i want to say it's my favorite hoya but i don't know no because no i don't know i'm not gonna say it but i just said it <laughs> yeah so let me let me know what you guys think of that it's looking lovely Right, so up next I've got my little Fetonia here. Um, this one is the mosaic skeleton um, sent to me by Laura. Um, and it's growing lovely, but I noticed the other day, and I don't remember seeing this damage when I first got it, because it looks like it's kind of been nibbled by something on this, only that side alone. This side's looking lovely. Um, but he's doing lovely. I've... Uh, do I do with this? <laughs> I just kind of water it when it's dry um, and I'm determined to not kill it um, but something else seems to be determined to kill it but I'll kill that thing before the thing kills it. Um, anyway, right. Um, I do want to get this a bigger pot but I kind of don't, I don't want to do anything too quickly with it in case I, I don't know, I, I, when things are working I leave them alone because it's working. And so because this is grow uh, growing lovely, staying alive, I don't want to necessarily change its pot. Um, not that I'm worried that that will kill it. I know that won't kill it. But if I change where it is, the pot it's in, then in my mind it kind of changes. It will change how I look after it, which I don't want it to. Because how... I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else. But because of how it's doing now, I'm just going to leave it. Because it's doing good, right? That makes a lot of sense to me, but I don't think it made sense in words. Right, and then the last thing I'm going to leave or oh, show you guys before we end is my ZZ Ravens have put on so much growth, both of them. Oh, there's rubbish in there. <laughs> and there's rubbish on the floor. Right, <laughs> I missed the bin. Um, I've been keeping this by the bin, which sounds weird, but it's like not weird, I promise. Um, 
this has put on so much new growth. All this green growth is new. Um, and that is just amazing. Um, yeah, all the growth is so healthy as well. And I, was, I wasn't expecting it not to be healthy, but how it, it just looks so pretty as well. Like with the green going through there as well, it gives it a really different contrast, which is really nice. And that's just such a lovely, oh, isn't that good? <laughs> it looks so good. Uh, the other one hasn't grown so much. Um, I'll grab it. Otherwise, I'm just talking like at the plant and not at you. Right, so this is my second one. Uh, which seems to have only grown one new stem, which is not a problem. We all, we all progress at different stages. <laughs> um, they both get about the same light level. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah. No, this one gets more. This one gets more because when this grow light is on, it like illuminates the area that this is in. Um, but yeah, this one hasn't grown so much. Let me grab the other one as well. They're quite heavy because the soil is like really dense. Um, so this was just one plant. Oh, that looks so good in those pots. Um, this was just one plant. Um, I bought it, divided it up. I did a video on it. If you guys want to see that, go back onto my channel and check it out. Um, and now they're growing. They seem to both, they, what was it? Was it in, uh, they started growing in autumn? Yeah, it was around like late or no winter. It, I think it was winter they started growing, uh, because I hadn't put on any new growth throughout the year until it got to winter and then they both started putting on new growth um but they look so good so i'm happy with that and i'm gonna leave it there that's gonna be the last thing i show because um uh because the video is currently 42 minutes but i'm gonna edit it so when i upload it it'll probably only be like half an hour um and then i'm gonna do another video straight after this um because i've got some seeds to sow so if you guys are interested in that stick around to see that next video <laughs> but um i hope you guys enjoyed i i feel like all i do is show updates but i don't really have a working desk like i i know i've got a massive desk over there and then i've got my computer desk right there but they're both covered in plants so there's no space to do anything um so it makes it really hard for me to really do much that's why i've been using the the shelving that's up there to do stuff on anyway right i'm in such a strange like my brain is very the wires are all going like this none of them are connecting um so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video uh, let me know what your favorite of this was and uh, what's growing in your collection at the moment because in the winter different things grow too in the summer obviously <laughs> so please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you would like to see more um, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.